Good morning, everyone. It's Lee Henson, President and Founder of Agile Dad, and it's time for today's episode of The Daily Stand-Up. So without any further ado, let's get started. It's Friday. That's right. It's time for us to celebrate another Friday, beginning to our weekend. I hope you have an amazing one. And as always, it's time for our Agile, not-so-Agile episode of The Daily Stand-Up. And today, I wanted to talk to you about living your best life. Now, I know that's a broad topic, but there are so many things we can do to make a difference, whether it's making a difference in the world today or making a difference in our homes. So um, I had someone ask me if I could put together a top 10 list of key tips for living your best life. And and I think I got it. I think I got a good top 10 list here. It took me a little while to get there. So I wanna make sure that we we talk about these because I think each one is incredibly important. So coming in at number 10 is uh, the importance for you to try to visualize where you wanna be. So let me explain. So if you constantly are picturing yourself living your best life, think about your surroundings, what you're doing, the world around you. And I think that if you envision all these different pieces, it's going to help you to really see yourself where you are. I remember the scene in A Greatest Showman where he's standing in front of the window and he sees himself in the ringmaster uniform or the ringmaster outfit. And that helped him see where he was going to potentially be. And it worked. I also remember in The Music Man, Professor Harold Hill always talked about the think system. And even though it sounds so funny right now, if you think it, if you dream it, you can do it. The visualization process really works if you can imagine where you are. And if you feel stuck, it means that you have to develop a better mindset, that you have to think stronger, that you have to find the tools necessary for you to get there, and that you have to be able to visualize where you're trying to be. Number two is going to be find your sense of purpose, or number nine, I guess, is find your sense of purpose. We're doing 10, 9, 8, 7, so not find your sense of purpose. You know, we thrive as humans when we feel like we're useful or we're part of something bigger. I, I think it's just important to do things that make us light up. Uh, we want to make sure that we surround ourselves with people who help us understand our purpose and help us build towards our goals. You want to make sure you're finding ways to filter out the bad, to remove the bad uh, vibes from what you're trying to do and and have opportunities to reflect to gain that growth that we're trying to get when we're trying to find our purpose, right? So I think it's important for you to understand your core and to understand what you're trying to do and to get to a point where you're really focused on being the best you that you could be. Coming at number eight, aim for growth. Um, I love this quote from Will Smith. He said, practice is controlled failure. Uh, the question is, what things are you willing to fail at in order to get better? So you can ask anyone who's a professional athlete, a professional, whatever, that they've had enough practice and enough failure to realize the things they need to do in order to be good at what they do. So there's a reward at the end if you not only fail, but learn from those failures. Everything should be somewhat of an experiment in life. We shouldn't ever be bound by just doing certain things and saying, that's it, we're not going to do anymore. We need to have controlled failure and we need to understand how we can promote ourselves from that failure, how we can learn, how we, you know, it's not about how many times you fall, but it's about how many times you get back up after you fall, right? And I think that's the key. Okay. So coming at number seven, prioritize health. I've heard the quote over and over, health is wealth, right? But I think sometimes we don't take care of ourselves physically. We don't care of our mental health or emotional health. And I think we need to leave work at work. We need to, and that's especially hard now. When working from home, wow. You know, a lot of people in this post-COVID or this during COVID era are starting to tie work and home together because they're working from home for crying out loud. So I think that if you're going to get to the bottom of all these underlying issues and the things that are happening in your life, you need to learn when to promote your mental health and how. And you need to understand how to promote your physical health and how to get into a groove so that you can keep your body healthy, keep your mind healthy, and most importantly, keep your spirit healthy, your heart healthy, so that you have both physical health, emotional health, and mental health. Because I think all those things tie together in the end. Okay, that leaves us with six. Take action, right? I think that sometimes we have good intent on doing things, but we don't act on those feelings that we have. So it's important for us to, when we feel something, do something. We see these signs all the time, see something, say something. But if you feel something, do something. Whether it's extending a helping hand to someone, whether it's uh, advocating for something that you know is right, whether it's, no matter what it is, you need to take action. You can't just be a bystander for your entire life and expect to live a full, rich life. 
You need to find ways to get in there and do your part, contribute, take action. Next, we're going to talk about figuring out your finances. You know, money can't buy happiness, but I'll tell you what, in the end, money matters, right? It's just, it's one of those things where, you know, Dave Ramsey always says, beans and rice, rice and beans, get rid of your debt, create a snowball. He calls it Financial Peace University. It's an outstanding concept, and it's something that everyone should do if you haven't already. But he has baby steps that you have to take along the way to get there. And I think when I talk about figuring out your finances, you know, sit down with your spouse, with your loved one, with the person who's closest to you, with your partner, figure out what your dreams are, figure out how much it's going to cost you to fulfill those dreams later and figure out what you need to do today to be prepared for tomorrow. The best advice I've ever given was to a group of teens where I was doing a speech and I told them that the money they invest today as teenagers from their first job is going to be worth the most later on. So the moment they're allowed to invest in an IRA or 401k, especially if there's a match, they need to make sure they're putting money in there because that money is going to be worth so much more later than the money that they invest when they're later in life. Just food for thought, right? The truth is when you think that the average person only has when, they, when they're about to retire you know, from you know, work, that many of them have on average $200,000, $250,000 when they retire. That, that scares me, right? That's not enough for you to live through retirement. So you end up living on social security or minimum payments. And even if you had a pension, it's just not enough to get you by. So I think we need to get to the point where we have a lot more money than that to sustain us over time so that we know that we can continue to live our best life. Next, we have nurture your environment. And I think this, this boils down to being intentional about the things that surround you and how they influence you. Create a sacred place. Create a place that's spiritual to you. Create a place where you're surrounding yourself with positive energy. And I think that the people and objects around you are going to greatly impact your mood and how you feel about yourself, uh, your self-worth, right? So sometimes I find changing your environment. It could be you know, changing up the decorations in a room or changing the surroundings or getting outside and enjoying nature or whatever the case may be. Some of the best times I've ever had were out on a hike by a waterfall or doing something along those lines. It's just change your environment to create new and interesting things. And don't be afraid of the ultimate environmental shakeup. Travel, go places, see things. I know people are saying, but what about COVID? I love you to pieces, but what I can tell you is you only got one life. And if you just always are in denial saying, I don't know what to do because of this or that or the other, you're never going to get to the point where you enjoy your life. So sometimes I say, you got to live a little, learn a little, you know, go ahead and take that trip, go ahead and take that vacation. Because I think that the things you expose yourself to are going to be absolutely amazing. But also don't be afraid to do things locally. There's nothing like a, a night out of art, you know, art and wine or uh, you know, go roller skating or cheese making. I don't know. Find something to do that you're going to enjoy that's going to make you better. Next, I want to, I want you to consider. So we're at three now. It's coming at number three. Consider your routine, right? Either create a routine if you don't already have one, or break a routine if you already have one, and do something outside of the box. Uh, sometimes you need to just realize that there's more to life than your building than just building your life. <laughs> you got to find ways to do something that's enjoyable, right? Recently, I had an opportunity with my son to go kart racing, of all things. And this is a go-kart that's almost all the way on the ground that goes up to 70 miles an hour on a little bit over a mile track. It was, it, was, it was fantastic. It was one of these experiences that I never pictured myself doing. But boy, it was so outside of my normal routine, but it was super fun, right? Drive fast, small car, low to ground. It just felt incredible. It just felt amazing to be part of something that uh, we both enjoyed. We both had a heck of a time doing it. It was great, right? It was absolutely insane. Okay, coming at number two, find ways to serve others, right? And I think that this is important because when you lose yourself in the service of others, that's when you find out who you really are. I've said that a million times, but your internal purpose needs to be build relationships to uplift others and to build a place where you'd want your family to be through acts of service and kindness, donating money or time to a cause, volunteer at a homeless shelter or somewhere else. Smile at someone. I mean, it doesn't have to be something that costs money. Do something that's going to help you focus and live your best life. And of course, coming in at number one is become spiritually grounded, whether that means investing in a faith-based church uh, and going to a church, whether it means uh, meditating or doing whatever you have to do to become spiritually centered. Because I think once you recognize where you are in life and you start to prioritize the things that are important to you with regard to 
your, your spirituality and who you are as a person. When you become centered and grounded, it makes it easier to do all those other things that we talked about on the list. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as always, we encourage you, if you have something you want to talk about, don't be afraid to ping us. Let us know. Learn more at AgileDad.com. We'd love to hear from you. I hope this message hit home. Uh, we'll talk to you on Monday. As always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Do take care.